Identification with Jesus is one of those truths that most Christians do not and will not believe. They bump their head and say, it's too hard. I don't, I don't really get that. Identifying with Jesus. Let, let me stop you right here. I'll ask you two questions. One, are you a believer? Well, first question, are you a Christian? Two, are you a believer? If you answer yes to both of those, you have absolutely no right to make any objections. Here's why. As a believer, you say anything that's in the word, you will believe. It doesn't matter what your past says, where you come from, how you used to think, what your mama, what your daddy said. You say as a believer, you'll believe anything you see that's in the word of God, that's in the Bible. Two, as a Christian, you identify with him. Well, most Christians say they think I'm a sinner. Uh, I'm sick. Um, I'm just I'm just me. I'm not worth much or whatever. Really, not as a as a Christian, not only do you identify with him, you identify that you acknowledge as a Christian that as he is, you are. Why? Because the Bible tells us, 1 John, as he is in his world, so are we. So it doesn't matter where you come from. We don't have any excuses to have our own opinion about ourselves. The only right, the only opinion that you have a right to is the opinion that the word of God, or really that God gives us in his word about us. So he says you are as him. So start identifying with Jesus. And as you do so, you'll see that you have the same position, the same privileges, and the same rights as Jesus has. Right? Right. You know, there are many companies out there, as they employ people, they inform their associates, an associate someone who identifies with a company, and they work for them and they represent this company. But as an associate, this company informs you of the benefit packages that are offered to you. And really, it's up to you to take advantage of them. They're not going to force them upon you. It's up to you to take advantage of them. And there are many different um, benefit packages they have out there. What's the purpose of a benefit package? The purpose of a benefit package is to ensure that you, as an associate, are well taken care of so that you can properly and adequately um, represent this company. That's the purpose of a benefit package. And there's many benefit packages out there that exist. Uh, I'll just name a few. 401k saving, savings plan, um, health care health insurance, all these other different things. Um, there are even some companies out there that will pay for all of your college tuition. That's a pretty big deal. I'll ask you this right here. Is it possible to work at these, these companies with these different benefits, these different privileges, and not take advantage of them? It is. Why is that? Because it's up to you to be informed and to take advantage of them. Now, why do Christians find it so hard to see that it's really just the same thing? It, I mean, really, as a Christian, there are too many Christians out there. Really, most Christians in the world don't take advantage of the benefit package that God has given to us. What's the benefit package? Let me ask you this right here. Can you imagine Jesus right now at the right hand of God having an IV attached to him with a bunch of angels ministering to him because he's sick? I can't. I don't. I can't find any scripture for that. Can you imagine Jesus being broke right now, maybe sitting outside of a Salvation Army in heaven, you know, eating crumbs off the ground or whatever? I, I just can't imagine that right now. But let, let me let me give you the picture that the Bible tells us of the benefits that actually Jesus has. Um, the Bible tells us um, that Jesus obtained all of the promises of God. 2 Corinthians 1.20 tells us this right here. All of the promises of God are yes and amen to those who are in Jesus. What are the promises that God made to us as a believer? Really, that every need that a man could have, we will be well taken care of. Um, healing, peace for our mind and our souls, um, prosperity, God wants us taken care of. Um, and really... Jesus has, the Bible tells us that Jesus won all of these things right here. Well, position. What about position? I'm glad you asked. Physician, uh, Ephesians 2, 6 tells us that you are seated with him at the right hand of God in heavenly places. Where's Jesus? According to the Bible, he's seated at the right hand of God. Where are you? According to Ephesians 2, 6, you are seated with him, in him, at the right hand of God. So that really, we don't have any excuses. I mean, of course, you know, I, I guess you can acknowledge the fact that where you come from and the life that we used to live before, you we committed our lives to Jesus. 
you know, maybe it was a little rough. Maybe we didn't have all of our need met. But really, none of that matters because in him, your needs are met. In him, you are just as he is. And even let's let's talk about right. What rights do we have? What rights do we have as a Christian? Well, let me ask you, if Jesus were here and we see the world in the condition that it is in right now, how would Jesus respond to these situations? You see, a lot of situations in the Bible, Jesus didn't even pray for. He knew the will of God, so he knew that he was a son of God, so he thus he knew he had a right to act. 2 Corinthians 5 tells us that we are ambassadors for Christ. So that means we bear the name of Jesus. What does it mean to, to, to walk and to live in the name of Jesus? That means we have the right to act, to speak, to love, to heal, to deliver as if Jesus were here right now. That means what he would do in the situation, we have the right to act as him. You are in him. And as you identify with him more and more, you'll see that you have the same position, the same privileges, and the same rights as Jesus has. Know that you are in him. Learn about your identity in Christ.